what happened? We go now to number nine, no, number ten, sorry. This is Surah to Ali Imran. And uh, at the beginning of this surah, uh, of this ayah number 55, Allah refers to wafat. Inni mutawafiq. I'm going to cause you to experience something called wafat. In the dua that we perform in Salatul Janaza, the word wafat is there. In the context in which the word wafat is used here, the context is the same. You've got to go to context to understand the meaning. So Allah is saying, Oh Jesus, I'm going to take your soul. I don't think, I don't think there is any intellectual integrity in translating this to say, Oh Jesus, I'm going to take you, which is what Abdullah Yusuf Ali does. Muhammad Asad, on the contrary, says, I'm going to cause you to die. And that's when Muhammad Asad made a mountain of a mistake. May Allah forgive him. He was a great scholar and I respect him. I'm going to take your soul. That is the context in which Wafat is used here. So number one, they did not kill him. Number two, they did not crucify him. Number three, Allah made it appear like that. Allah made it appear like that. He can make it appear like that in several different ways. The Vatican rented a jumbo jet a hundred years ago. A jumbo jet a hundred years ago. <laughs> the Vatican rented a jumbo jet to spirit out of the Vatican a book called The Gospel of Barnabas. They had to do it secretly. That's why they needed a jumbo jet. <laughs> and in this Gospel of Barnabas, anything that comes out of the Vatican, if the Vatican says the sun is shining, Imran is going to look up in the sky to see. Is the sun really shining? I don't believe it until I see it myself. But the Gospel of Barnabas tells us, and this is the scholar right here, Dr. Omar Said, who has the expertise on the subject, that someone else was made to appear like Jesus, alayhi salam. And that poor fellow, who never claimed to be the Messiah, I don't know whether he stole his next door neighbor's mango, and the law for stealing mangoes was crucifixion. I don't know what he did, but most certainly he never claimed to be the Messiah. So don't come to me with any rigmarole story about he did such and such a thing. He never claimed to be the Messiah. And this poor fellow was crucified. They call it the theory of substitution. And somehow or the other, most people fell for it the theory of substitution. Walakin shubbihalahum. Allah made it appear like that means that Allah caused someone else to take the appearance of Jesus, alayhi salam, and that poor fellow, innocent fellow, was sacrificed, was crucified for something he was innocent of. That was unjust. So if you hold on to the theory of substitution, you are laying at Allah's door an act of injustice. And you'll have to answer to it on Judgment Day. So if you want to hold on to the theory of substitution, prepare yourself to answer for it on Judgment Day. I reject that. 
but you don't have to accept my view. No. The one thing I don't want are students of mine who accept everything that I say without critically assessing it. When I give an opinion, do not accept it. When I give an opinion, do not, do not, do not accept it until you are convinced that it is correct. Otherwise, you are dangerous people. And if I make a mistake, you will perpetuate that mistake. And that's not what I want from students, no. If your teacher makes a mistake and you correct that mistake, you get blessings for it, and I will pray to Allah to bless you because you protect me now from error. So, they did not kill him. They did not crucify him. But so it was made to appear unto them. And if you want to hold on to the theory of substitution, that's your choice. I reject it. Well then, what happened? Ya Isa inni mutawafik. I'm going to take your soul. And then you have again in Surah Al Ma'idah, verse number 116, the word wafat is used. 117. When you cause me to experience wafat, 117. Yeah. So on two occasions the Quran speaks about Nabi Isa al-Islam and his soul being taken. Two occasions. If the soul is taken, is it possible that it can be returned? Or is it that every time the soul is taken, you will experience death? What is death in Islam in the technical sense of the word? Mouth, death. And the definition of mouth in the technical sense of the word is when the soul is taken and prevented from ever returning. Because of barzakh, a barrier. So the question now remains, if Allah took the soul of Nabi Isa Islam and did not return it, he died, which is what Muhammad Asad believes which is what the Ahmadiyya movement believes. And so they say, no, it was not Jesus. He didn't die. He went by bus, Greyhound bus to Kashmir. <laughs> he went by Greyhound bus to Kashmir and he lived his life in Kashmir and he died and is buried in Kashmir and crick cracked the wire bend and that's the way the story ends. Is it possible that Allah can take the soul and return the soul? Number 11, please. Surah to Zumar. And the same word wafat is now used here. Wafat. And Allah says, Surah to Zumar, verse number 42. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa heena mawtiha. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa heena mawtiha. Allah takes the souls at the time of death. Allah takes the souls at the time of death. Walati lam tamut. And those who do not so die, fi manamiha. Allah takes souls while they are asleep. Allah takes the souls at the time of death. And for those who do not so die, Allah takes souls while they are 
asleep. فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتِ when he takes the souls while they are asleep, he then keeps those souls for whom mouth is ordained. And then, وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى And the rest of the souls, he returns, meaning returns to the bodies for a prescribed period of time. And so this verse of the Quran makes it abundantly plain and clear that not because Allah has taken a soul does it mean that you are dead. I don't need any jumbo jet out of the Vatican. <laughs> no. I don't need any theory of substitution. substitution. No. When Allah says he took the soul and he made it appear that he was dead, the meaning is plain and clear. Plain and clear. That Allah took the soul of Nabi Isa alayhi salam to make it appear that he was crucified. And having taken the soul of Nabi Isa alayhi salam to make it appear that he was crucified, Allah then returned the soul when, of course, no one was looking. So when Allah returned the soul, he's alive. Did I, or did you ever hear the story about the woman? She had a heart attack. And they called the ambulance. And the ambulance came. And the paramedics checked her out. No sign of life. Put the body in the ambulance. Headed back to the hospital. They checked her out. And they pronounced dead on arrival. And then they sent the body to the morgue. And then the doctor has to go to perform the post-mortem. And for a post-mortem, you take off all the clothes. So the woman is lying naked on a slab. And the doctor comes and rolls up his sleeve and takes up the knife. And as he's about to cut, she opens her eyes. And she sees this man with a knife in his hand. And she sees herself naked and she screams out. And the doctor said to her, Madam, you're dead. <laughs> Madam, you're dead. Because all the medical signs, and we, Dr. Zaid is a medical doctor, all the clinical signs were all there that there was no life. You could have examined her in any medical facility in the world. There would be absolutely no evidence, none at all, that she was alive. But yet she was alive. Why? Because Allah had not as yet ordained that the soul will not return to the body. Until Allah has ordained that the soul will not return to the body until then you're still alive so she was still alive and when the soul was returned to the body and she opened her eyes naturally you in your case you also scream this happens all the time the worst place of course for this to happen particularly to the money lender, the bankers lending money and interest, is when you are pronounced dead and your family arrange for the funeral, your loved ones, eh? and then the body goes down to the cemetery 
and they bury you and they forgot to put a cell phone <laughs> they forgot to put a cell phone so after you've been buried and the soul returns to the body and you open your eyes you ask yourself how come the lights are not on this place is so dark and you call out to your wife you normally do that don't you and uh, no answer from your wife I wonder where she's gone maybe she's in the kitchen making coffee and you try to get up no space where am I where am I you in your grave you in your grave and you're now going to suffer death and it'll be the most horrible death and Allah is shadid ul -iqab. terrible in his punishment hmm? so Allah can take the soul and return it in your case it will return while you're in your grave and you'll die in your grave hmm? so Allah took his soul the Quran says so twice not once Allah took his soul. Don't tell me Allah took him. That's a dishonest translation. Dishonest. Allah took his soul. If Allah takes your soul and does not return it, you're dead. But Allah says they did not kill him. So the only possible explanation, and remember that the Quran came as Tibian and Likulli Shay to explain all things including this is that Allah took his soul and Allah then returned the soul when no one was around when no one was around the Christian sources tell me that his body was put in a, in a cave the Christian sources tell me that they put a rock at the entrance of the cave Dr. Zaid is more competent in dealing with this subject than me he was a Christian missionary once and there was a Roman guard posted outside. Hmm? And then when they opened the cave later on, there was nobody in the cave. Their sources say it's not ours. We don't know. We can say Allah returned the soul when no one was around. And then Allah raised him unto himself. Not raised him to heaven. No. Raised him to the Samawat. And this book, Surah al kaf in the modern age, has a chapter entitled The Quran and Time. And that chapter deals with the Samawat. If you are in the Samawat, uh, even if you live for a thousand years in the Samawat, and you are a young girl, 18 years of age, when you come back, you still be 18. You don't need any cosmetics to keep you young. <laughs> because it's a different world of space and a different world of time out there. So even if Nabi Isa Islam was in the Samawat for 2,000 years when he returns, he'd still be at the same age biologically as when he left. And so when the Quran says, He, Nabi Isa Islam, is the sign of all signs. He's a major component as, an, as a person. The whole of the subject of Ilmu Sa'a, Ilmu Akhiru Zaman, revolves around him. But the verse goes on to say, uh, let's go back to number Bukaulihim. Inna katalna al Masiha Isa ibn Maryam. What was that? Number number eight. Number eight. And verse number one forty nine. One fifty nine. One fifty nine. Number. Go on. Four one fifty nine. There we are. One fifty nine. Having said that they did not kill him. They did not crucify him. Allah made it appear like that. Allah took his soul. And Allah raised him unto himself. 
And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salam, alayhi salatu wasalam, then being the most powerful voice in history, to prophesy that he will return. He will one day come back. Allah then goes on to make a statement that is of crucial importance for Akhirul Zaman. وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Verse 159. وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ At the time when he returns, at that time when he returns, there will be none from the Ahlul Kitab. إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ that you must believe in him before he dies. وَيَوْمَ الْكِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا But even though you declare your faith in him, it will be of no value to you. On judgment day, he gives evidence against you and you go into the hellfire. So I was invited by a Jewish synagogue in New Jersey to give a talk. And the synagogue was filled about 200 Jews there. And I said this, that when he comes back, you're going to have to believe in him. And even though you declare your faith in him, it will be no benefit to you. You're going in the hellfire. When the lecture was over, they surrounded me. They surrounded me. And they were demanding from me, why do we have to declare faith in that which we have rejected? There is no justice in that. We rejected it. Why do we have to believe in it? I got out safely from the synagogue. <laughs> But they never invited me to come back again. <laughs> the reason why you will have to believe in him at that moment when he returns is because history will be repeating itself. When you use proper methodology, you could bring the pieces together as a harmonious whole. When you study Ilmu Akhiru Zaman, only then can you bring the pieces together. The pieces of the jigsaw. History will be repeating itself. Here is a verse of the Quran, here is a prophecy. And the commentators of the Quran and the scholars of Islam, in dealing with this verse of the Quran, this prophecy, concluded that this was a divine prophecy which will one day be fulfilled. And they were of course correct. But that was not all. There was more to it. And you would not know the rest unless you had study Ilmu Akhiru Zaman. What is it? There was an epic encounter once upon a time in Jewish history which is repeated in the Quran. When truth and falsehood clashed with each other and truth challenged falsehood and falsehood was proud and arrogant and mighty and powerful and falsehood was an oppressor ruling over Egypt we have some Egyptians here today Alhamdulillah <laughs> we have little Maryam with us here today from Egypt Pharaoh was Mr. Egypt Pharaoh he controlled the land of Egypt. The rivers of Egypt flew beneath his feet. And I am the Lord Most High. Ana rabbukumul a'ala. You must worship me, not other than me. And Allah sent Musa alayhi salam with the truth to confront falsehood. Musa alayhi salam didn't have any fighter aircraft with him. He didn't have any cruise missiles with him. He didn't have any nuclear weapons with him. He didn't even have a machine gun with him. He didn't have any armed forces with him. He was just Musa, alayhi salam, with his brother Harun, alayhi salam. 
And that encounter between truth and falsehood witnessed the emergence of many signs. Uh, yet, nine of them. But among these were signs of punishment of the Egyptian people. Punishment from Allah. To wake you up. And uh, when the final moment came, when all hope seemed to have been lost for Musa alayhi salam and Banu Israel, then Allah intervened at the last moment, as is going to happen again in Damascus. As is going to happen again in Damascus. And he says, strike the water with your rod, with your staff. And the water parted. The water parted. And Pharaoh and Musa Islam and the Israel people were able to go across the sea. This is number 12. And when Pharaoh and his armed forces attempt, attempted to cross the sea, then the waters came down and drowned them all. But when Pharaoh was drowning, he realized because the veils are now removed from the eyes. So I told them in the synagogue, the veils will be removed from off your eyes on that day. When the veils were removed from his eyes, he realized, I'm not God, I'm drowning. And the true God is that, God that the Israelite people worship. As the Zionists will recognize that the true God is the God that the Muslims worship. So he declared his faith in the God of the Israelite people while he was drowning. Nobody knows about this. There was no one down there and in the water. Only Allah knows it. When he declared his faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, Al-an, now Pharaoh, now, wa qad asayta qabl, and prior to this, you were in arrogant rejection, wa kunta min al-mufsirin, and you were committing fasad in the world, that which corrupts and destroys. Falyawma, listen carefully, falyawma nunajjika bi badanik, badan, is your physical body. فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً History will repeat itself. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً History will repeat itself. But you will not recognize this unless you study ilmu akhiru zaman. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ Most people are too busy. You know with the afternoon traffic and the morning traffic and all the work watching CNN and Al Jazeera. You don't have no time to study the Quran. You have no time to observe the ayat of Allah unfolding in the historical process. Hmm? So, this day we have decided to preserve your physical body, O Pharaoh. So that your physical body, when it is rediscovered, when it, re when it resurfaces in the historical process, your physical body, will function as a sign for a people to come after you. That if they live the way you lived, waging war on Islam, demonizing Muslims, preventing the women in France to put on hijab, <laughs> if they live the way you live, they will suffer the way your people suffered. They had, what was it? 
frogs. You sit down to have your roti chanai, you find a frog inside of it. You go in the bathroom to take a bath, frogs there. You go in bed with your wife, frogs there. And then there were locusts and lice and water turning to blood. And so what's going to be this time? What will it be this time? What will it be this time? Punishment from Allah. It'll be Dukhan. And when that Dukhan comes, it will be a reenactment of that epic encounter. In the same way that those were signs, this will be signs. Dukhan. Smoke. The Christian scriptures, Dr. Zaid is the expert, speak, I believe, of three days of darkness. Uh, I have found a hadith, I have not assessed the authenticity, about 40 days and 40 nights of darkness. Could it be nuclear warfare with thousands of nuclear weapons exploding? And the mushroom clouds blocking out the sunlight. Could it be? It is you, my students, who are going to have to continue this research in time to come. But what is happening now is going to be repeated in history. That the people who live the way you live will also die the way you died. That at the very last moment, when Allah intervenes, and Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, they will now have to do what you did underneath the water. They will have to believe in him. They said he's a bastard. They rejected him as the Messiah. But they'll now have to accept him as the Messiah. But acceptance of him as a Messiah at that time will be of no benefit to you. But most people, no, sorry. This is Surah Al Nisa, verse number 159, I believe. And there will be none of the Ahlul Kitab but must believe in him before he dies. Nabi Isa alayhi salam will experience maut, and at that time, uh, they will have to believe in him. So history will repeat itself. We go now to number 14. In which we have a second reference to history repeating itself. And now this one identifies who are the people. Who are the people who are going to behave the way Pharaoh and the Egyptians behaved and who will therefore be punished the way they were punished. And thereupon he, Fir'aun, resolved to wipe them off the face of the earth, whereupon we caused him and all those who were with him to drown. The next ayah says, and after that we said to the Israelite people, dwell now securely in the land. Uh, he translates it as earth, I would translate it as land. But remember that when the last day shall come, jitna bikum lafifa, jitna bikum lafifa. We're going to bring you back to the land, meaning the holy land. And when you're brought back to the holy land, you will not be brought back as a homogeneous community, all speaking the same tongue, all enjoying the same cuisine, all wearing the same clothing. No. Jitna bikum lafifa. We're going to bring you back as a community which will not have homogeneity. Some of you are going to have an Iranian stomach. 
and others are going to have a Moroccan stomach, <laughs> and others are going to have a Yemeni stomach, and others are going to have a Russian stomach, <laughs> because we had scattered you all over the world. Some of you be wearing Yemeni clothing, Moroccan clothing. Huh? This is why the word Lafifa is used. Jitna become Lafifa. So this verse of the Quran identifies who are the people who are going to live the way Pharaoh lived and who will die the way he died. Number 15. We're going to bring you back to the Holy Land. But in number 15, which is Surah al Anbiya, we told more about the return. Allah speaks about a town or a city. And you cannot, if you look at the books of Tafasir, you will see that it is not yet possible for the Mufassirun at that time when events had not as yet unfolded in the world to exhaust the meaning of the, of the verse and to identify the town. And so there are some, some efforts in the tafsir. Someone identified the town as this place, as that place, as the other place. Okay, but they will all say Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Allah knows best. وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ And there's a ban on the people of a town which we have destroyed that they, the people of the town <laughs> will not be able to return to the town to reclaim it as their own. Which town is it? Hatta until Ida Futi Hat until Gog and Magog are futihat, opened, opened, released. Wahum in kulli hadabin yan silun. And they descend from every height or they spread out in every direction. And since both the Quran and the Ahadith depict Gog and Magog to be tremendously powerful, great power. Indeed, the hadith of Sahih Muslim indicates that they have a power which only Allah can destroy. When they are released and they descend from every height and spread out in every direction, with that power, they will take control of power in the world. So you'll now live in the world order of Gog and Magog. Hmm? When Gog and Magog are futihat, opened or released, then you will see these people returning to that town to reclaim it as their own. When they return to that town to reclaim it as their own, they're not going to come back as a homogeneous community. Jitna bikum lafifa. They will come back as a, well, I think Muhammad Assad uses the word, a motley crowd. That's all English. <laughs> With diversity in their ranks. Hmm? Which town is it? If you use the proper methodology that we have described in the last section, last session, the proper methodology takes you to only one town. There's no hit and miss. There's no guessing. The proper methodology takes you to Banu Israel, 
and the proper methodology takes you to Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the Quran was written to establish that point. An Islamic view of Gog and Magog also establishes it. And so now we have that they're going to be returned to the town of Jerusalem. And if they behaved, if they live the way he lived, they'll die the way he died. Meaning at the last moment, there'll be a divine intervention. Strike the sea, but in this case will be the return of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. In, uh, in, Allah, in the Quran, Allah speaks of the Holy Land and he says وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا This is number 23. Number 23. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الزِّكْرِ Number 23. 